Good afternoon, I'm Giovanni Dennis with the Midday News, a special welcome if you're joining us online at onespotmedia.com. Not true. The health minister says the management and the distribution of vaccines to the regional health authorities remain intact as he sought to dispel as a rumor the claim of a vaccine black market in Jamaica. I have certainly read it in one of the daily papers, but I have no information. And when I check with the authorities, they have no information. As far as they are concerned, the integrity of the product and the inventory and management is intact. We asked the minister if he was aware of any private entity procuring and selling vaccines locally. Absolutely not. I would be more surprised if that were the case. And I would want to use this occasion to say to people, be careful of who comes with, with these kind of offers. Because one of the things that you're going to find, again, in keeping with this principle of high demand and low supply, is that you're going to find people who will attempt to manipulate the process for profit. And any private individual who comes to you to offer vaccines, I'd be very wary. You would never know what's in that vial or in that syringe. As far as we know, the Ministry of Health is the only entity that has gotten vaccines. The high number of people requiring help at hospitals has in some instances prevented nurses from being able to take a break to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Nurses Association of Jamaica President Patsy Edwards-Henry says the number of nurses vaccinated so far is lower than expected. She told our newsroom that the heavy workload is a factor. You would understand that the hospitals are full to capacity. So at some point in time when nurses were supposed to have run to take their vaccines, they couldn't have left their post. But the uptake is good. I'm not concerned yet. We started on Wednesday. By tomorrow, we should have some numbers as to the percentage of nurses vaccinated. But for now, from what I'm hearing, it's good. And even in terms of adverse reactions, we are not hearing much of that. The health ministry is looking to complete vac the vaccination of healthcare workers and other critical groups by Friday. The government is now in dialogue with IGL to procure additional cylinders of medical oxygen to fill the current shortfall. IGL is the lone supplier of medical oxygen for health facilities, an over-reliance that the government concedes is a problem. Hospitals are now scraping to get by as the shortage worsens across the country. As the country continues its battle to curb the spread of the coronavirus, the latest hole that needs patching is the shortage of medical oxygen island-wide. There is a significant increase in demand and the sole supplier to the ministry institutions have not been able to keep up with that demand for one reason or another. We have been in dialogue with them around getting additional cylinders and they have indicated that they are in that process now of getting additional cylinders. Dr. Tofton was unable to say when the additional supplies are likely to arrive, but health officials are making appeals of their own. This as hospitals in western Jamaica are now on a desperate quest for oxygen from private entities amid the surge in COVID-19 cases. Director of the Western Regional Health Authority, Errol Green, says the Cornwall Regional Hospital is limping along, as are other facilities. The situation in South Lamar, which is one of our bigger hospitals, I've been getting reports over the past few days, getting reports up to Sunday evening, that they were almost out. They would have been out, all things being equal by Sunday evening. The situation is worrying. We're appealing to IGL to see what can be done to improve the situation in the western region because we are, we are we are desperate now. Meanwhile, Chairman of the Southeast Regional Health Authority, Wentworth Charles, says the Kingston Public, Spanish Town, Princess Margaret and Linstead Hospitals are also grappling with the shortage. We are seeing a demand now of anywhere between four to five hundred percent demand in the institution. And we are for cases like Spanish Town where we would have supply once per day. We now require two, three times supply per day. And certainly throughout the region, 
we are having this increased demand that has placed a heavy strain on the institution. It is a problem. Institutions are running low, and so they would have to suspend some of the operations that require oxygen that are not immediately emergencies and focus on emergencies until the supplier can increase capacity. Over time, I guess we will have to look to see how we can manage in this space and maybe look at some alternatives as part of just hedging against the potential challenges that we're now facing. Those alternatives, though, are in the medium term. But in the interim, the obvious question is whether the government is seeking other suppliers to fill this current shortage. The challenge has been that there haven't been any in the market, but I suspect with time we may need to look at some other possibilities and, and even encourage some because it's, a, it's an important product for public health and the over-reliance on one supplier is a challenge at this point in time. And the vaccines are the biggest weapon used in the fight to end the coronavirus pandemic, but some countries are pausing the AstraZeneca job due to complaints of adverse reactions. There's also growing skepticism among Jamaicans about the drug, Cody and Barrett reports. Jamaica received its first shipment of 50,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine last Monday. With just under a week since the first jab was administered in Kingston, there have been concerns about the vaccine's side effects. Associate Professor of Occupational Health and Safety at the School of Public Health, UTEC, Dr. Alverston Bailey, accepts there is the possibility of persons experiencing what he described as extreme rare reactions from vaccines. But he says the side effects being reported are normal. Even though a small number of persons might have developed from the embolic event, the group of individuals vaccinated was so large that the risk was deemed to be extremely low. And therefore, in our Jamaican context, I do not think from embolic events is a real risk and you should take the vaccine. Dr. Bailey outlined some of the symptoms that are common to persons who may take the jab. The symptoms are headache, nausea, muscle pain, joint pain, pain at the injection site, warmth at the injection site, itching, tiredness, and feeling chilly, like having a low-grade fever. Anaphylaxis is a severe allergic reaction which can occur within seconds or minutes of exposure to something to which someone is allergic. The interesting thing with acute anaphylactic reaction is that we can respond to it immediately and counteract it with appropriate medication. So we bear that in mind that you could get an, a, a severe allergic reaction and the facilities have system in to counteract it immediately. Cody and Barrett, TVJ News. Jamaica's COVID-19 death toll is nearing 500. The health ministry is reporting that the respiratory illness claimed seven more lives in Jamaica, increasing the death toll to 492. Three of the deaths were recorded in St. Catherine, while Kingston and St. Andrew, St. James, St. Mary and St. Anne each recorded a single death. Meanwhile, the country yesterday confirmed another 806 COVID-19 cases from 2,055 samples. The overall case count is now 31,305. St. Catherine led with 205 cases, followed by 150 in Kingston and St. Andrew, then St. James with 73. And it's now time for a break here on the Midday News, but please stay with us. We have much more when we return. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. Efforts by the Jamaica Public Service Company to improve its streetlight program have been met with backlash from the Manchester Municipal Corporation. At a recent monthly meeting, the chairman of the corporation, Donovan Mitchell, criticized the company's decision to centralize its streetlight program as a money-making tactic. As you hear in this report, Mr. Mitchell is calling, the, calling on the Office of Utilities Regulation to intervene. JPS is robbing the country. I don't want to say they're raping, but they're robbing us. They're robbing the taxpayers. It's a disgrace, man. Chairman of the Manchester Municipal Corporation, Donovan Mitchell, outraged at the Jamaica Public Service, JPS, following news that its streetlights program will now be managed under a centralized system. 
Mr. Mitchell argues removing the responsibility from the local JPS officers is unfair to the citizens of Manchester. And for somebody in Kingston to determine the scheduling of streetlights repair, while at the same time, the council is paying these bills for streetlight. It is very, very unfair to the citizens of Manchester. He explains it is already difficult to get in contact with JPS customer care representatives, insisting that a centralized system will make it even more challenging. Even if your JPS go disconnect your light and you call in and then send a two one number, even if you're in the JPS go office and you're using the phone in there, it takes you 45 minutes to get to somebody on the line. It's a total disgrace to what is happening to us as customers. They have to do better. And OUR needs to step in and do better. The corporation's chairman described JPS decision as a money-making tactic at the expense of good customer relations. We need to know the policy by which you know you repair streetlights because I can't call and say, Mr. 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 Shortridge, the light in front of Mandeville Hospital out, so kindly look at it for me as a matter of urgency. You have removed that from me as a citizen's representative. Yes. That is what JPS has done. It is all about money. It is not no more about service. The centralization of the streetlight database is expected to facilitate joint audits of streetlights in each parish and the implementation of a more effective streetlight repair program. JPS has responsibility for the repair and replacement of streetlights. However, municipal corporations determine when and where new streetlights are installed. Operations manager at JPS for the parish, Quinn Shortridge, argued that the change won't be a drawback as is being suggested. I'm not saying to you that it's a centralized team in Kingston. I'm just saying to you that it's a team that's going to pull it from a central database. So the the, the same thing. The no, same thing is that. So, me, uh, what, I'm, <laughs> me, so what I'm saying is that. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that they will look at the database and they will say, okay, the Royal Flat Division has X amount of lights out. We'll assign the team to the Royal Flat Division. However, Mr. Mitchell was still not satisfied with his response. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. Still with the JPS, the decision by the utility company to close its commercial office in Morant Bay is not sitting well with the St. Thomas Municipal Corporation either. Cody and Barrett has more. So far, JPS has announced it will be closing its offices in seven parishes and moving services online. A decision councillor for the White Horses Division, Hubert Williams, says the parish is not prepared for. Her internet service is having done. It's up, it down, it gone. So they come and look at it, it gone again. Up, down, up, down. No, I still just can't get when they're talking about this online thing to close on St. Thomas. When we don't even, how can I get online? There's no line, any line at all that is in St. Thomas right now, it's closed line. In addition to paying bills, Mr. Williams says there are other issues that disgruntled customers will have no way of seeking assistance. My life is due, and it is subject to be disconnected. And I went and paid the lightning this morning. And by the time I get home, light has been disconnected. I made the proof which was me pay the light in this morning before they actually came out. Then who we go to? How we gonna get the light connected back? Because you shall run to JPS and present the They don't care. Councillor for the Land Dewey Division, Edward Marr, raised another concern. And I want you to weigh the pros and cons. It is now pushing these poorer people who don't have no means of communication to you people to resort to the to, 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 to thief in line. And then you see when you compare the cost of running the office versus how much light I got to from now on? Boss, man, a dangerous thing I've ever in this country. And the Councillor of the Morant Bay Division, Rowan Bryan, questioned the legality of the light company's action. The Office of Utility Regulation, kind of, uh, OU or whatever, kind of, but there have to be some governing body who regulate how they operate. So what we need to do, I think we need to check the regulation if they're supposed to keep an office. Because let me tell you something, a lot of time, a lot of things go unnoticed that is illegal. 
but nobody speak of it, nobody think of it, and so it just continued that way. They're asking JPS to reconsider the closure of its commercial offices, adding that a letter will be written to the Light and Power Company outlining the concerns. Cody and Barrett, TVJ News. The 14,400 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine which Jamaica has procured under the COVAX facility are scheduled to arrive in the island around 4 o'clock today. The shipment represents the first batch of 124,800 doses to be received through COVAX. The other doses are scheduled to arrive by May. Though grateful for today's shipment, the health minister says the government was expecting more. Uh, it's something we're looking forward to. A little disappointed that the numbers are not more. But we were expecting to get more and more volumes. But nevertheless, we are, I am told, the first Caribbean country, English-speaking Caribbean country, that is receiving commercially acquired quantities of vaccines up to this point. So, in a sense, we're ahead of the curve there. In the meantime, the health minister insists the, mis the mishap with persons not scheduled to be vaccinated receiving jabs last week has been sorted. He says the ministry is working to strengthen the monitoring of each vaccination site, noting that if there are persons in the health facilities operating against protocol, they will be found and removed. What we're going to have to do is to be a lot clearer and more consistent in the communication, a lot more firmer in terms of managing each site to ensure that persons who are not supposed to be there are politely told that this is not their time. And uh, to the extent that there are deviants in the system who are manipulating the process, then we need to weed those out. Almost 3,000 tilapia fish were stolen from a fish farm in Ridgepen, St. Elizabeth, Saturday night. The, operation, the operator of the farm, Ryan Dyer, said he became suspicious when he noticed a number of baby fish at the side of the pond Sunday morning. are still alive. So I realized the men, I mean, they were here last night and just by daybreak, they were able to, 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 um, to leave with a number of, of the stock here. So if you look at the pond here now, we actually... Um, let out the water to just to see exactly what's happening, to see the impact of what's happening. Mr. Dyer said he could have earned about $1.3 million from the fish and the market was available. Now he is appealing for more to be done to address predial larceny on the island. That I would have purchased to, to bring, the, to bring the, the stock to this, that um, it can be reaped. Uh, it, it's really a big loss and I, I would love for the, the, the Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries to really see how I could be assisted to, to, to put, in, put back this in and to probably to get some more ponds. Vendors in the Charles Gordon market in St. James are expressing dismay with what they say is the deplorable state of the facility. The vendors identified some of the problems they are facing. Water. Every morning when rainfall has been seeping water all through the place. Right here so some other places and a lot of people inside here. So the man can't sell sick of water, big hole like a pan, everything in your power with like all maggots. Maggots, sir. Maggots. The man they can't get to work for the pay maggots. And water and pan in the market, a pan. And we are living in a nasty condition and corona there and then about everybody. We can't get a proper service in the market. We need more proper management, sanitizing. If they even sweep the market, they're not getting all the dogs out of the market. Why not? We need to get some more proper service in the market, sir. The vendors are asking for help. In news overseas, the Netherlands and Ireland have opted to suspend the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine. They join a growing list of countries concerned of blood clotting and other possible side effects. More from the CNN. More than a third of European countries have now partially or fully suspended AstraZeneca vaccinations. After a report from the Norwegian Health Authority of patients developing blood clots after inoculation, 
Concerns have been emerging throughout the week. EU countries reported three deaths and multiple incidents. A 49-year-old woman in Austria died as a result of blood coagulation, and several countries then banned that particular batch of AstraZeneca doses. Then Denmark went a step further, suspending its entire AstraZeneca rollout for two weeks after a vaccine recipient died of a blood clot. Norway and Iceland immediately followed suit. It is important to note that those countries acknowledge there is no proof the incidents are connected to the vaccines, but they do want more information. Meanwhile, a majority of European countries, including Germany, Spain and France, among others, are proceeding with the rollout. AstraZeneca responded that data from more than 10 million vaccine recipients shows no evidence of increased risk of pulmonary embolism or deep vein thrombosis for any age group, gender or country. And the European Medicines Agency seems to agree. It says that the number of such events in vaccinated people is no higher than in the general population. The EMA is investigating the incidents, but advises that in the meantime, vaccines can continue to be used. In sports, the West Indies will now look to win all three series on tour for the first time since 2013, when they face Sri Lanka in the two-test series starting March 21. This after the Windies swept their three-match one-day international series against the visitors with a five-wicket five win at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium in Antigua on Sunday. Batting first, Sri Lanka posted 274 for six from their 50 overs. One Hindu Hasaranga, 80 not out, and Ashen Bandara with an unbeaten 55 led the way for the visitors. This as Akil Hussain had three for 33 for the Windies. In reply, a century for off 102 from Darren Bravo led the Windies to victory at 276 for five. Player of the series, Shea Hope, was the next best with 64, while captain Karen Pollard made 53 not out. Saranga Lakmal ended with 2 for 56 for Sri Lanka. And that's the Midday News. I'm Giovanni Dennis. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.